all the processes in a system require some resources such as CPU, file storage, input output devices, etc. to execute it. The CPU has to provide an equal amount of time for each and every process. That is the concept of multi-processing system. When many processes run on a system, they also compete for the resources they require for execution. This may arise a deadlock situation. Dear students, welcome to BCA classes. I am Ravi Kumar K.R., lecturer in Computer Science, Vidyasham First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Students, in this session, we are going to talk about the deadlock in operating system, that is Unit 2, Chapter 3. Now, in this session, we are going to cover the topics, deadlock characterization, prevention, avoidance, detection and recovery of deadlocks. Let us start with the definition of deadlocks. So, all the processes in a system require some resources such as CPU, file storage, input output devices, etc. to execute it. So, you know what is a process? The programming execution is called a process. Any process to be executed or I mean in order to execute a process it has to share the CPU as well as hardware and other software resources. Say for example for file storage, input output devices and to execute it, execute any process. So once the execution is finished, the process releases the resources it was holding. So whenever the process in execution, it holds the particular resources, for example, input device, output device or memory devices. And once the execution is completed or finished, it has to be released. I mean, the particular resources like input device, output device or memory devices has to be released from that particular process. When many processes run on a system, they also compete for the resources they require for execution. This may arise a deadlock situation. When the deadlock situation arises, see, if you talk about multi-processing system, what is the meaning of multi-processing system? Here, more than one process is running in a system. When in multi-process system, see, more than one process running in the system. So, all the process will share the same resources. Is a hardware or software resources. So, that during, that is the condition or, I mean, here, every resource, every process will require the hardware or software resources for execution. So, that is a situation is called as deadlock situation. So, deadlock is a situation, it is a condition which more than one process is blocked because it is holding a resource and also required some resource that is acquired by some other process. Therefore, none of the process gets executed. So, just imagine that if there are more than one process running in a system. Suppose pro process 1, if I say P1 is a process 1, it is utilizing the hardware part of it. Maybe for example, input device. At the same time, processes 2, the P2, also require a same input device or a hardware resource for execution. So, till the P1 completes its execution, so P2 should be in a waiting state or it has to wait to complete the P1 to be complete its execution. So, so that is in that case one of the process will be in a holding shade uh, because the resources is not available to that particular process. So that is the meaning of the sentence here. Therefore none of the process gets executed because one or the other processes will be holding the resources. In the next slide. Now, necessary condition for deadlock. So, when the situation arises, what are the conditions for deadlock situation? Now, here there are four necessary conditions. They are one is called mutual exclusion, hold and wait condition, or no preemption, and circular wait. See, these are the four conditions to be satisfied for a system to be in deadlock situation. Now, let us see what is mutual exclusion. Here, only one process can use a resource at any given time. The resources are non-shareable. 
what is the first one or what is the mutual exclusion here according to this so only the resources is not shareable resource are not shareable so only one process will utilize only one process it utilize the resources effectively at a given time so that is mutual exclusion second one is hold and wait this is the second condition so what is that the process is holding at least one resources at a time and is waiting to acquire another resources held by some other process so this is what you have seen in the previous slide what is the meaning of hold and wait here so hold and waiting is when the program in execution or when a process in execution that particular process will hold the resources and at the same time other process will be waiting for the same resources for its execution so this is the concept of hold and wait situation or one condition next one is no preemption the resource can be released by a process voluntarily that is after the execution of the process so here the concept is when the process is in execution it has to hold the hardware resources once the execution is completed that particular process has to be released from that particular resources and here in this condition it released by by the process voluntarily after execution of the process the particular resource will be released voluntarily that is no preemption next one is circular wait next one is a circular wait now look at the example here a set of processes are waiting for each other in circular fashion in circular fashion so look at the example here in the next slide example suppose this is resource 1 and another resource process 1 and process 2 suppose this is for example this is resource 1 and this is resource 2 in this example see this p1 it is it holds the resource 1 and here process 2 it needs resource 1 at the same time this resource 2 which holds this process 2 holds resource 2 and here process 1 will be in waiting state so this is the meaning of circular wait here one process is depends on another process or this resource is depending on those two process so this is the concept of here circular wait a set of process are waiting for each other in a circular fashion so this is another condition for deadlock next one is methods of handling deadlock situation now we have seen the deadlock the definition as well as the condition for deadlock now let us see different methods of how to handle deadlock situation so here one is the first two methods are used to ensure the system never enters a deadlock now what you have seen in the previous slide conditions for deadlock the first two conditions or first two methods what you have seen here one is mutual exclusion and hold and wait these are the two conditions and these two conditions ensure that system never enters a deadlock that is the one condition next one is deadlock prevention i mean what how to avoid deadlock prevention so this is done by restraining the way a request can be made and since a deadlock occurs when all the above four conditions are met we try to prevent any one of them thus preventing the deadlock so when the deadlock situation arises when all the four what you have seen in the previous slide it should be fulfilled for a deadlock situation and to prevent that any one of the method has to be avoided so it is possible by restraining the way the request made to the particular resources here the pro the process is the concept is any process would like to make use of any of the resources either a hardware or software resources first a particular process it has to send a request to a particular resources and it has to get a response from the particular resources for its execution in or in other words we can say that the cpu has to provide an equal amount of time for each and every process that is the concept of multi processing system so in that case so i mean by maintaining the request the request so this can be avoided so deadlock 
system can be a situation can be avoided by having a proper method of request and response system. Next one is when a process requests a resource, the deadlock avoidance algorithm examines the resource allocation state. If allocating state resources sends the system into an unsafe state, the request is not granted. So what is the concept here is? So here, once the request is made by any process to a particular resource, then it uses the deadlock avoidance algorithm and it examines that the resource allocation state, whether the resource allocation state, whether the resource is busy or it is free. In that case, if the allocating the resource sends a system into unsafe state, the request is not granted. Suppose the particular resource is not free or the resource is not allotted to a particular process, then that particular process will be in, in unsafe state. I mean, the request is not granted. Therefore, it requires additional information such as how many resources of each type is required by the process. If the system enters into unsafe state, it has to take a step back to avoid deadlock. So another concept here is, so it requires additional information like such as how many resources of each type is required by a process. So by looking at this condition, by considering this condition, so it can be deadlock condition or situation can be prevented. Next one is deadlock detection and recovery. Now, when the system fall into deadlock situation or when the system in deadlock situation, it can be recovered, it is possible to recover, recover by using detection and recover algorithm. So this is deadlock detection recovery. It has to be done through proper algorithm. Next, we will see the difference between starvation and deadlock. Now let us see one more condition is called starvation condition. So let us see the difference between that. So the deadlock is a situation, is a situation in which more than one process is blocked because it holding the resource and also requires some resource that is acquired by the some other process. So that's what I've seen in our previous slide. Now let's see what is starvation now. The so starvation is a process in which low priority process are postponed indefinitely because the resources are never be allocated. So here, uh, there's a concept here is that all the process are executed based on its priority. The process which will be having high priority, it will be executed first or it will be in the queue. But the process which are with lower priority, so those lower priority process will not be executed and they have to wait for it and they are postponed indefinitely because the resources are, are not available or it will be never allotted to those type of low priority process. So in that case, the particular process will never be executed. So this is the condition called starvation. And here resources are blocked by a set of process in a circular fashion. So what you have seen in our previous slides and resources are continuously used by high priority resources. Obviously, as we are giving importance to or the process of high priority will be executed. So lower priority process, we, it has to wait for a long time. So at a particular of time, all the resources will be busy, occupied by high priority process. It is prevented by avoiding any one necessary conditions required for deadlock or recovered using recovery algorithm. So deadlock conditions can be avoided what how we have seen in the previous uh, slides. So deadlock condition can be avoided, it can be prevented by following one of the methods, by following different algorithms. And here it, it can be prevented by aging, means only it has to wait for a long time. Once the processor is free or when the CPU is free or any hardware resource is free, then only it, is go, it will get a chance or this particular process with the low priority will be executed. In a deadlock, none of the process gets executed. So obviously, when the in that situation, deadlock situation means that is when the particular resources is not available to any of the processes, then obviously in that condition, the process never be executed. In starvation, 
higher parity process are executed while lower parity process are postponed see this is the condition called starvation and deadlock is also called a circular wait and here starvation is also called lived lock and here so this is a difference between starvation and deadlocks in the next slide we will see what are advantages of deadlock method or condition no preemption is needed for deadlock it is a good method if the state of the resource can be saved and restored easily so it can be done and the good activities that perform a single burst of activity it doesn't need any runtime computations because the problem is solved in system design these are the advantages of deadlock condition next one is what are the disadvantages here the processes must know the maximum resources of each type required to execute it so this is to avoid the deadlock conditions and here the processes must be knowing maximum number of resources to be utilized by a particular process for execution preemptions are frequently encountered it delays the process initiation there are inherent preemption losses and it does not support incremental request of resources so these are the drawbacks of deadlock situation students so so far in this session we have discussed about deadlock definition advantages disadvantages and how to avoid deadlock conditions we will continue our next discussion with the chapter 1 unit 3 memory management system thank you very much